Hi, we're here today with a fun and educational activity that you can do at home, at school, or even at a camp. And it involves making craters. Go outside tonight, take a look at the moon, and you'll see these circular features with lines coming out. Those circular features are craters, and the lines coming out are ejecta patterns, rays. The way those craters were formed were from rocks coming from outer space and smashing in to the surface of the moon, pulverizing the, the, the soil there, the, what we call regolith, and spraying it out along those ejecta pattern rays. You can make your very own craters. You start with about an inch of some flour, spread out nice and smooth, and then take something that is of color, like these are little cake sprinkles, and kind of just sprinkle them evenly over the surface. Then you need another layer, and what we've selected is cocoa. You can sprinkle it with your spoon or sift it over the top, which will make a more even surface. To simulate a rock impacting a surface, drop them from a reasonable height. I'm gonna use this big rock first. As you can see, this impactor made a very nice crater. This indentation is the crater. The impactor, the rock, is outside because it actually bounced out. That happens sometimes in real life. And you see that it threw out a bunch of the subsurface material. And we have our own little geologic excavation. The white things coming out, those are the rays, just like you see on the moon and some of our sprinkles got thrown up and that represents the mineral diversity of the surface that was impacted. Not all meteorites come in perpendicularly. Sometimes they come in at an angle. Take it and kind of chuck it at an angle. You see that the ejecta pattern is a little bit different. Notice there are no ejecta rays on this side, they're all on that side. From looking at a crater, something we can tell is what sort of angle the impactor came in at. Remember, you can experiment by trying different layers of materials to put down in your pan to impact with different rocks. You can use different size rocks. You can try dropping from different heights or throwing at different angles. And then take a look at your ejecta patterns and see what that tells you about the crater. So have a We are familiar with gravity as the reason objects fall. But what is gravity? Sir Isaac Newton described gravity as an attractive force between all objects with mass. He described gravity as a mysterious action at a distance. Einstein described gravity as the bending of space and time. The reality is that gravity keeps us from falling off the earth and it's what keeps the Earth in orbit around the Sun, and it's what caused the Sun, planets, and moons to form. Every object with mass attracts every other object with mass. That means your dog, the moon, and a huge star are Simple all attracted. Terms. This means the law of gravitation states, all objects in the universe attract each other through gravitational force, and the law depends on mass and distance. As the distance between the two objects gets larger, the force of the gravity gets much smaller. According to Einstein, the larger the mass of the object, the greater the curvature of space and time, and the greater the attraction between the objects. The closer the objects are to one another, the greater the attraction, and the further away from one another, the less attraction, because the curvature of space and time has less of the impact. The reality of Einstein's view and Newton's view is that gravity depends on mass and distance. This is why we feel the force of the Earth, but not the force of the Moon, which is both smaller and further away from the Earth. However, the Earth is attracted to the Moon. Evidence for this are the tidal bulges. Thank from year to year, the moon never seems to change. Craters and other formations appear to be permanent now, but the moon didn't always look like this. Thanks to NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, we now have a better look at some of the moon's history. The moon likely started its life as a giant ball of magma formed from the remains of an impact on Earth about four and a half billion years ago. 
After the hot material collected into a sphere, the magma began to cool, eventually forming a crust on the surface of the moon with the magma just underneath. Around 4.3 billion years ago, a giant impact battered the moon's south pole, forming the South Pole Aitken Basin and sending debris as far as the opposite side of the moon. This impact marked the beginning of a period that would cause large-scale changes to the moon's surface. One by one, more huge collisions shaped the terrain, some forming large basins that would eventually fill in to become the dark-colored patches of the moon, known as Maria. They began as normal craters, but soon started to change due to the size of the impact on the relatively thin crust. Because the moon had not yet fully cooled on the inside, lava began to seep out through the cracks caused by the impacts. The resulting volcanic activity spread lava throughout the craters, gradually filling them in and cooling. Because of the high iron content of the basalt in the rock, the maria reflect less light and therefore appear darker than the surrounding highlands of the moon. Around one billion years ago, volcanic activity ended on the near side of the moon appears unchanging to the human eye, as a permanent record of its own history, and a glimpse of how craters may have formed here on Earth.